today's video will be a fun little one-off for now that I wanted to just toss out there. Adam wanted his rims for his motorcycle painted and clear-coated, so I helped him get that done so he could have the color that he wanted. We went with a beautiful metallic blue for it, and we'll talk more about that once we get there. To get started, we needed to clean up the lean-to a bit and get a fan installed for a negative pressure environment to pull the overspray out of the booth and keep the air just a tiny bit cleaner for us. We started off by putting a box fan in and enclosed it with some excess house wrap that I had laying around the lean-to. You'll notice as I start spraying the color coat that the fan has changed. The box fan that we used was just far too weak to be usable for this, so we went and grabbed a better Vortex fan. It just couldn't pull enough air through without it, so that was the better option. Well worth the $60. Adam had prepped his wheels already by cleaning, sanding, priming them, and then putting a silver base coat on them so we could just hang them and spray them once he was here, so that part isn't in the video. The paint being used here is from a spray can. It's actually Duplicolor's metal cast anodized coating. This is not a traditional paint that is a one and done type of coating system. It's designed to be a semi-translucent paint that requires multiple coats to get the desired effect. In order to get the best effect for them, you'll need to spray a silver base coat first. Duplicolor actually makes a silver base coat designed for their paints, but really any high reflective metallic silver paint works fine. Also, we couldn't find the base coat being sold around here, so we had to work with what we had. I don't actually remember what we had used for it, but it was a high metallic silver paint. We had sprayed a test piece before doing this to see at what point we actually wanted to stop. As you spray more coats, you get a richer and more vibrant color. Adam had decided on either five or six coats to match what he wanted. I can't quite remember. This video was recorded a few months back, hence uh, the longer hair you see. In between coats, you'll wait about 5 to 15 minutes just depending on the temperature and relative humidity. We were at around the 10 minute mark for when we did this. When the time comes to paint my bike, I may try out one of their other colors that they offer. Quite a few of them are very beautiful. I just haven't decided yet if I will or what color I would do. I will say that just having the rims sitting on this all thread rod made them much easier to paint with being able to just spin them on the rod and hit every surface without having to spray at weird angles. It's always easier and better when you're able to just keep the can at an almost 90 degree angle to whatever you're painting. Also whenever you're spraying with a can or with a spray gun, you always want to keep your wrist perpendicular to the surface. If you twist your wrist while spraying, it will cause a lot of overspray and dusting to occur which tends to cause orange peel and a rough surface. Thank you. 
We waited about 30 minutes before moving on to the clear coat. The clear coat is important for any paint job as it protects the paint and just gives it an extra bit of shiny, beautiful luster. I'm going with Finish One's clear coat as it sprays nice and easy. It's a 4 to 1 mixture ratio, so 4 parts clear coat to 1 part hardener. I definitely mixed up way too much here, end up wasting quite a bit which is never good, but I didn't know how much it would take to do 3 coats on these wheels. It's been a while since I sprayed clear coat sadly. Once it's all mixed up, use a strainer to let it flow into the paint gun so there are no contaminants getting into the gun. As the clear coat is getting poured into the cup, you'll notice my very obviously OSHA approved and ultimate footwear, the flip flops, the absolute best for any and all work that can be done. You may notice that the picture quality here for the clear coating may change a tiny bit as I swapped away from the GH5S for the Galaxy S21 Ultra as I didn't want clear coat to stick to my camera lens as it's kind of expensive. The first coat of clear coat is just a simple dust coat or tack coat. It's the first layer that helps the thicker layers of clear coat adhere and is better for less runs. After the tack coat is sprayed on, I just went back quickly and did my first full coat, making sure to wet out the surfaces as I spray them. Rims are an interesting one to spray as there are very few flat areas, so you have to be careful not to cause many runs, which thankfully I managed to not do. I ended up spraying three coats to build up a nice and thick coat of clear to protect the surfaces, especially since rims tend to take quite a beating. As there's a good bit of dead air during the clear coating here, I just wanted to take a moment and mention some upcoming projects. I'll have a few videos coming out as part of a series for the Daytona 675 finally. I've got a few of them recorded and mostly edited. Still have to do the voiceovers for them though. The plan is to do a full build series on it. It will just take a bit of time to do both the work and get the money for the parts for everything, as parts for that bike are relatively hard to find on the used market sadly. I'll have a video coming out on building a solar array once I finally get around to building it. It's been so abysmally hot here in Florida that I've had no desire to do any work outside short of what I have to do. I also recently picked up a 2008 Miata as a project car, so some of the work that it needs will become videos for the channel as well. A good bit of my usual DIY stuff is on the back burner as some of the house projects are at a bit of a standstill, but if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see or need help with, let me know in the comments below and I'll see about making a video for those requests. I also have a few drone videos that I recorded that I still need to edit as well, so we'll have some more of those on the channel in the near future too. I've also been floating the idea of starting a podcast with a few friends, and if that's something you'd be interested in, by all means, let me know so I can see if there's interest in that type of thing for people as well. While the final coat was wet, we removed the tape and waited for it to dry. If you do it after the clear coat dries, sometimes it can lift the edges, and that's never a good thing. The finish came out fairly well in my book, not perfect as the prep work sadly wasn't a perfect finish, but he was happy with it and ultimately that's what matters. And that's all for this fun little video. As always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.